if you've been part of the Fantastic Frontier community for quite a while now, it's not uncommon you see people comparing other weapons to other weapons. Some examples being the Red Boy Handgun and the Frontier Star Gun. Which is better? Questions like that. Well, in this video, I'll bring up some of my own personal points and try and make the answers a bit easier. Though, please be aware, this entire video was my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Feel free to disagree. I'll be using the example I gave at the beginning. It's pretty basic, but it's still a good starting point nonetheless. In my opinion, no. Yes, it does give amazing burst damage due to Hanagon's absolutely colossal base damage, and this set you will be using if it anyway will make it last fairly long, which is obviously forgotten life. At first, this sounds amazing, cause well, it is, but it has a lot of drawbacks, which makes Targon shine a bit more for me. First off, there is the possibility of action cancelling making your hand and gun fire… nothing. Although this is fairly uncommon, it is still worth looking out for, as it's happened to me an annoying amount of times. There's also the issue of handgun, despite using FL, is quite the stamina eater if you use action cancel. This is a pretty big issue if you plan to use handgun, as it eats stamina a lot anyway, which can make running limited so enemies might get very close to you unless if you use GRL to boost away. If you care about burst damage, you might not care as much, but it's obviously still a huge issue. It's fire rate. Although fast, it's definitely slower than Stargun, which does hurt its overall DPS, and there is again the obvious stamina issue. All of the drawbacks of Handgun are fixed with Stargun. It has half of the base damage of Handgun, but absolutely makes up for it due to its godly DPS and reliability. It is great for bosses that have beefy HP and take a while to kill, such as King Rat, Circus, Mr. Difty8, and whatnot, due to it taking, like, what, barely any stamina at all to use? Its fire rate is practically unmatched, unless if you use action cancel handgun, which is a mixed bag for me already. I guess the only con Stargun has compared to handgun is just the fact you would need to buy more bullets since it fires a lot faster, but at least it's not GRL rocket con. Explain to me how this utter goofball forgot about Divine Shot. Like, it's the main selling point of the weapon, not to mention the very reason it can action cancel. When it works, I guess. If you're unaware, it instantly kills any enemy that is at 10% HP. The best usage for this is at King Rat, as it shaves off a lot of time from his massive 100,000 HP health pool, which is crazy as it is, really just means that you're taking off 10k HP for free. And as Frozen mentioned, Handgun has a lot of base damage. So, it's not a bad idea to use it even compared to Stargun, but personally, I just use Stargun due to the raw DPS and sheer reliability. Well, first off, rude. Just cut off my section like that? I'm gonna fire you from the set if you do that again. But you asked me to come here! I, but, I am like five seconds away from quitting. But I didn't ask you to cut me off. Yes, I invited you, but you have no permission to speak over me, do you? <laughs> I do! No, you do don't! You. I never asked you to cut me off! I own his channel and you don't! Who is the owner, huh? Huh? It was a revision in the script! You told me to make revisions! I didn't tell you to cut me off! You little <laughs> shit! <laughs> Sorry about that slight alteration. Um, a certain talking egg wanted to pick I a fight with me. Now, let's get into a friend who won't cut off my sentences, unlike a talking egg I just had to deal with. Well, what do you think is better? I mean, it's a mixed bag, honestly. Sure, handgun does provide more DPS overall, but it's you can't really sustain that DPS as well as star gun. I'm not dissing Rap Boy handgun entirely, but the thing is, is that action cancel is gonna get patched anyway. So overall, star gun's just gonna be the better choice, regardless of if it updates or not. Anyway, thanks for your input. It means a lot to this video and me. Though, we've spent a bit too much time on this subject. You know, handgun, strike gun, how many times have we heard those words now? Anyway, we should move to the second comparison now, right? Well, 
That depends on the context you look at it. If you're fighting crowds and are able to bait the enemies into toasters, or if you're fighting big enemies like Parasite, Mr. Diviate, or Circus, this certainly does a lot more damage due to the toasters. If all of them spawn and hit, it easily does some of the most damage in the game, which is insane. And to top it off, after it's done, you can spam your normal projectile to do even more damage. It also has a nice bonus of it being the only spell with a steel projectile, meaning it can snipe small enemies like inspectors, doll hunters, and whatnot. But that's under the right conditions. Trust me, I love Wicked Junk. I obsessed over it when I first got it, and even now it's still pretty funny. But I gotta hand it to Frontier Spell, but for being more reliable. Notice how I said crowds are big bosses? That's where it shines best, against almost anything that is not against what I listed, unless you plan to use a normal attack for sniping, the damage loss is very apparent. Frontier Spellbook in comparison can be used anywhere. It has the highest raw DPS out of any spell aside from Greater Storms, and is very safe to use and is practically unpunishable. The spell makes you really fast so you can dodge the enemies like they're nothing, all the while doing very good damage. This vessel might be underwhelming, and to a certain extent I agree, but the buffs it gives are very undeniable. Speed, damage, even a bit of area attack, and attack rate. Frontier Spellbook's cost efficiency is what makes it so good. Though, please don't take this as me dissing Wicked Junk. Honestly, I use Wicked Junk and Frontier Spellbook together regularly, and to be honest, they are very scary together. But for me, I'd have to say Frontier Spellbook is better, due to the sheer raw general value it has. But if you're under the conditions where Wicked Junk shines, it is undeniably much better. Though, just like in my star gun and handgun bit, let's get someone else's opinion on this, cause I just don't want my own, especially considering how often I see them compared. So introducing Mr. Duckbread. Okay, so starting with this, I just want to say uh, thank you Mozzarella for having me on this video. Now, as to what mage book I like better, it's probably gonna have to be Wicked Junk compared to Frontier Spellbook, and well, to be fair, I didn't really get to use a uh, Frontier Spellbook that much. I probably had it for 30 minutes and then I sold it. <laughs> but I don't know. I should probably buy it again because people are telling me it's good. And I used to use Wicked Junk a lot and it's the only spellbook that you can actually action cancel with. And if you try to action cancel with the Frontier Spellbook, it it completely bugs out. I don't know. Or at least that's what I remember. I'm not sure. However, from both, I've had a lot of experience with the Wicked Junk and less experience with Frontier Spellbook. Again, I probably might get the Frontier Spellbook again just to try it out. But I do like the Wicked Junk Spellbook better and its special move being, you know, the Rain of Toasters, which uh, that's kind of its downside because you have to be in the right area. I mean, it completely misses sometimes and it's kind of hard to aim unless I'm just really bad at Mage, which I probably am. However, Again, I used to use Wicked Junk a lot, but now I just use Nature's Wrath. I don't know if that was a good choice. I do like mainly all the spell books, except for Fire Soul. But that I mean, yeah, I I do prefer the Wicked Junk spell book over Frontier spell book, and that that's honestly just up to you guys what you guys prefer. They're both pretty good books from at least you know the experience I've had with them. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Thank you for showing up for the video again. Now, let's get into one of my other friends, Proto Shroom. So, do you think Frontier Spellbook or Wicked Junk is better? I think Wicked Junk is better. Mainly because, well not really mainly, but it's 5 million cheaper. The action cancels after the crit, or well, our move is pretty damn good. And the R move itself is amazing. Um, and if you were to get it from RNG, the um, junk spellbook is 0.16%, while the spellbook is 0.04%, which is much lower, obviously. And um, you'll probably be able to get Wicked Junk much earlier, and the damage is honestly not much of a big difference for it being like 10 million to 15 million. And like, 
I mean, it literally says in the wiki that with Machine Rug and Crunkson 4, it can do, like, the special can do 10,000 damage. And the Frontier spell look, it's like... It's, it's a Whoa, 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 we cannot allow any profanity in his family-friendly YouTube channel, or else YouTube will get me! <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit off track there. Though now, we should probably get it to the third comparison. This is very hard to compare, as both of these weapons are very good. Even if one of them didn't exist, the melee meta would be very different. Helping going over what makes the both of them so good, as jumping straight into the discussion might be a bit illogical without explaining the pros and cons, since not too many people play melee compared to a ranger mage. Pure blood dagger is very nice if you need to get around fast, due to the unique property of it lunging you forward each time you attack. It is the only weapon in the game to benefit from pure damage. What do I mean, pure damage? I mean pure as in you only have one class bonus. For example, Fire Guild is a pure melee set, as it only gives melee bonus. If you only have one type of class bonus, the damage Pure Blood Dagger receives is an astonishing 200% increase. And that's still with your melee bonus. It's certainly a step up from its base damage, but that's not even the best part. This special, if pure, allows you to heal as much as a rich man's delight. And if you're playing with a few buddies, you can use this special on them, as for some reason it gives you HP and doesn't do anything to them. This makes pure blood dagger a must in every melee set, as melees are very aggressive, so a heal with high DPS is very good and highly versatile, so it should basically never be underestimated. Now, for Red Power Fists. These are a lot more basic compared to Pure Blood Dagger, but it's nowhere near bad. Red Power Fist has a simple punching animation, which is very fast so it quickly racks up DPS. Although the special is mainly used for starting action cancels, it can be good if you're far away from something. Although, I just consider it to be a small bonus. Red Power Fist has a lot more base damage than Pure Blood Dagger, almost double. But as I mentioned before, Pure Blood Dagger gets a 200% damage increase from Pure Damage, so what can possibly make it better? Now, there is no definitive answer to this. Both have amazing DPS, versatility, and whatnot. They're also very cheap compared to other endgame weapons. But let's try and make logical points anyway. Pure Blood Dagger has the obvious upside of being able to heal as much as a rich man's delight, but the launching feature actually harms it in combat. In this game, generally, you want to have as much control as you can get over your weapon, but if it constantly pushing you forward, it can feel very wonky at times. Walking backwards helps, but the issue is still there. If also tested numerous times, and generally Red Power Fist has a higher DPS than Pure Blood Dagger while action cancelling. Using Ether for DPS is up to personal preference, but Red Power Fist allows you to keep good control of yourself while you violently punch enemies. Red Power Fist also has a bit more range which can help, but generally doesn't matter all too much. Red Power Fist also has a much easier time of crowds due to its bigger hitbox, compared to Pure Blood Dagger's obvious lesser hitbox. Though, despite how much I know about this game, I can't decide which is better. So, I'll just let you listen to my points and make a personal conclusion for yourself. If you're still watching this, well, Thanks. It's taken me a pretty long time to make this, because of how lazy I am. <coughs> Though, if I'm misinformed about anything, feel free to let me know in the comments, or yell at me about it in the Order of the Frontier Discord server. Off topic though, I want to say congrats to my dear friend Grandmaster Julian on getting his fifth fantastic top hat. <laughs> I do it myself, but I have a life. Which sucks, but yeah. Feel free to subscribe to him, link it in the description, along with that surfer I mentioned earlier. Aside from that, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a nice day.